you might recall that when we were talking about lists, I used a term known as a collection. And as you can already guess from sort of the title of the slide, we're now looking at multi-dimensional lists. Big, fancy, $5 word. But what we're really referring to is this idea of nested lists. And the way I like to think about this is what we're talking about is a collection of collections. The idea goes, if we think about it, once again, when we're dealing with a list, a list operates by having some index and some element at that particular index. Remember, the index is just representing sort of uh, one big magic variable and then specifically uh, uh, the point in memory for this variable where to go in particular. But when we're dealing with nested lists, we're dealing with a lot of data. And a really great way to think about this is how would I represent a table? If we look at sort of this table of miles between each one of these cities, you know, uh, to get from Chicago to Atlanta is roughly speaking 714 miles, give or take, uh, you know, how could I take this data that I have going on and represent it as a variable or as a list? Well, the way we can think about that is once again, if we think about this as a list, well, then this is just a collection of numbers separated by commas, right? And so from here, what we would need to do is if I'm just ignoring everything else for a second, you know, just there you go, ignoring all of this stuff for just one second, just dealing with if I needed to represent the distance from Chicago to everywhere else in sort of my, my list, I've got each one of these integers and I would use square brackets to represent, hey, we're dealing with a list. So realistically, what we're looking to do is just take this idea of using square brackets and having numbers inside those square brackets. And what if I just took that and put it in its own list? And that's where we can start to think about this idea of making additional collections. And so as you can see going on here, what we're dealing with is if I happen to have those distances, I can start by having a sort of master uh, list collection. So this is representing sort of my outer list. And then for every single entry that I just want in this big, again, collection of collections, I can go in and add square brackets to represent that iteration. I'm using air quotes here because uh, it's not really because we're not dealing with loops, but I could just represent them as each row uh, of that table is its own separate list. And as you can see here, I would add in additional curly braces to that. Now, you might also notice at the very end here, not only do I happen to have the square bracket to represent the end of a list, but again, since we're dealing with sort of a list of lists, a collection of collections, I have a comma representing, hey, I need to go to another location. Now, one thing that really starts to trip up students, and I will fully apologize for this uh, in advance to anyone watching this, is trying to now navigate nested list indices because now you're not just dealing with one, right? Before, when you were dealing with just one, you just had one indices. And so, you know, all I needed to do was say days at, I don't know, five. And I knew exactly where that went. It went to Friday. Ta-da. But now that we're dealing with multiple lists, we're starting to now think about how do I represent all of them? Well, the way to think about this for just a, a second is, again, if we think about it, this 
first portion of a variable or a list is just saying, you know, again, go to this point in memory and then skip some set of numbers to get to, in my particular case, the fifth element in my list. Now, when we're dealing with, you know, multi, multiple, 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 multi-dimensional lists, there's the word, or nested lists, because that's easier to say, what we're needing to do is specifically indicate, hey, which row am I on? And then which column I'm on? And we can do this by using more than one square bracket. So again, if we think about this, I'm trying to find one where uh, I haven't drawn on it yet. <clears throat> Let's imagine that I happen to have this, and I'll get rid of this for a second. I happen to have my variable distances that is storing all of these values in a nested list. Now, the first uh, indices that I would be looking to work off of is specifically my row. And to represent that, no different than when we were dealing with just the days of the week, I would come in and just pick the number that I'm working off of. So in my case, let's go with four. I want to look at row four. Well, I would come in and just put in that four. Now, this is again where the headaches start to uh, begin. How would I reference, say for example, I want to look at this number right here, 1549. So how would I get there? Well, I, I can see that yes, it is in fact sort of the, the two column, but how would I sort of code that out? Well, in Python's per, uh, particular case, the first thing you do is close out your bracket. The way to think about this is what you're doing is you're effectively saying, give me this. Remember, this is just a list of numbers separated by commas. So give me this list right here. And so if we were to just print that out, what we would get is that list of numbers. So 1375. Uh, 1763, uh, etc., etc. Now, the way to continue thinking about this is what happens if I had just stored that as its own little variable, which I'm able to do. That's perfectly legal uh, in all our cases. So, what if I made x equal to distances at 4? Okay, well, then remember it's just giving me back a list of numbers, and so if I wanted to access a particular value there, uh, I could do x at 2. Again, that's just referencing uh, the element in a list. So without having to use a, uh, an additional variable, what we can do is we can utilize the fact that everything sort of to the left of our square brackets gets evaluated first, very similar to when we had nested function calls. So all we would need to do in our case of getting our 1549 is distances for close that square bracket two. Now again, what this is referring to is this idea <clears throat> changed my color here, this idea that I need to first evaluate what is distances. Okay, well, distances is again someplace in memory. I go and grab all of that information, but then I say, well, I need to evaluate distances at four. And in this case, again, that is just going to, instead of producing a string or a, a numeric value like we did with just a normal list, since we're dealing with nested lists, I just, oh, I get that this is a list. And so finally, finally, once I've gotten the location in memory, and in particular the list, the specific list in memory that I'm working for, I can fully represent that using the two.
and we can see this. So if I came in, if I came in and built that out, and I've already cheated because it's a lot of typing of numbers. Uh, so once again, if I simply did distances at four, distances at four, what I should see is the fourth element in my outer list. So zero, one, two, three, four. So I should see again this fourth row. And that's exactly what I see, 1375, 1763, 1549, et cetera, et cetera. Once again, if I were to save this as a variable, that didn't change anything. So just to continue showing this, that didn't change anything. I just said, oh, well, make this list a variable. And then the same kind of way I can come in and treat this variable as if it is a list and print out that 1549. But finally, again, just to throw that concept out of the window, we don't need to have a temporary X to reference and get that, that list. I could simply just say something like four, uh, square bracket four, square bracket two, and it will once again get that same value. So that's how we can work with nested lists.